Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Foreman community demo. For any questions, uh, find us on the Foreman on IRC or on Twitter. So for today, Config Management Camp tickets are available. The schedule is being built now. Uh, we also have uh, FOSTEM, which started uh, releasing the schedule for the room. So you can see some Foreman talks in the info room over there. Uh, go and see that. We be, will be at both the events uh, with booths and our talk, so come see us there. Uh, Foreman 124 was released along with Catello 314. And Tomer is here to talk about the community survey. Hello. Um, so like uh, the past several years, <clears throat> we'll be doing a community survey again this year, expected to be released in the next uh, few weeks. Um, we take the survey results very seriously as feedback that we uh, use when thinking about what needs to be done. This year's survey has some new sections in it and some changes from previous years, but a lot of uh, the previous questions as well. Um, hopefully, it won't be too long, um, but we really appreciate the time of everyone who takes the time to fill it out. And looking forward to getting your feedback on what we are doing and what we should be doing better. Thanks, Tamar. We only have two presenters today. Um, we're pretty close to the holiday already, so thank you two for joining. Uh, Amir will be first with the Foreman ESLint plugin, and then Lukash with Foreman monitoring with PCP. So, Amir, to you. Hello, everyone. Let me just share my screen. We can see the screen, but I can't hear you anymore, Amir. Can you hear me now and see my screen? Yes. Cool. So today um, I will show you our new ESLint plugin. Um, it's for mainly for developers, especially for plugin developers. And this is part of our new Foreman ENV. So the Foreman ENV is a set of tools for development in React, of course, and of course our um, front end. Um, and of course, um, I think let's start with why we need Linter in our front end. And that is um, a trivial question because we think that with a lint, we can keep our code clean. We can collaborate better across plugins because the code looks similar. And of course, we reduce the amount of trivial reviewing. So let's start with how we can um, install it on a plugin. First, we just need to install it from NPM. Then uh, we just need to modify the package JSON, the lint um, value to use the TFM lint script and with um, the plugin flag. And you also can mention some directories that you want that linter to um, check. And in order to run that link, you just need to, en to run npm run lint. And if you also want your editor to look, to look into these rules, you just need to add eslintrc file on your root with um, the form and plugin and extending core and plugins rules. So 
how uh, how that it looks when you don't have any um, errors well if you don't have any errors it will finish with like this one and if you have some of course you will probably get some of this output um, keep in mind that you have some errors and some warnings um, and if you have only warnings um, you don't have to fix it basically it's just something that it's not the best practice of the um, of the thing um, and of, of course if you're lucky you can use autofix some of the rules have um, autofix feature and if you have lucky you can just run npm run lint with the autofix with the fixed flag and some of your rules will be autofixed that's it thanks thank you amir uh, Lukas, moving to you with Foreman monitoring with PCP. All right, uh, thank you. Let me screen. Let me share the screen. Uh, and yeah, I need to click on this. Firefox blocking and click again on start sharing and now uh, yeah yeah finally it should show up if you can confirm uh, I'll start yeah I can see your screen thanks so today I would like to talk more about uh, format monitoring um, Foreman, I think starting somewhere sometime in 116, we um, we created uh, or what I call telemetry, uh, a small API that uh, exposes some uh, internals from uh, from the Rails application, which is the bread and butter of, of Foreman deployments. Although, if you install many plugins, including Cotelo, there are few more components which are also <laughs> quite important. Uh, uh, um, so, uh, but I want to focus um, on monitoring of the REST application as well as as, as the generic uh, monitoring of of uh, from end servers. Um, uh, so, the the if you enable telemetry, you, you can do this via from an installer. Um, that will actually change settings.yaml, where there is a small telemetry section. Uh, there you can enable um, logging of telemetry, which is essentially for debugging, you know, uh, you know dropping the, all those information to log file, which is not that useful. And then there are two options, uh, Prometheus exporter, uh, which essentially, essentially if you turn, uh, turn it on, it, would, it will create a, a new endpoint slash metrics where, where you can, you know, configure Prometheus to scrape uh, the data from. And the second option is StatsD, which is um, alternative approach. Uh, then in that this case, Foreman uh, process or processes are sending out um, StatsD packets over UDP to a um, component that collects it. So it is pretty flexible. If you have a monitoring system in place, uh, it should be possible to start gathering the data. Uh, and what we have uh, is we actually integrated uh, or we have delivered um, documentation for satellite. Actually, if you search for, uh, let me change this window here. Red Hat Satellite 6, if you search for Red Hat Satellite 6 monitoring, there is a guide called Monitoring Red Hat Satellite, and it kind of describes uh, installation of PCP, which is the recommended tool uh, by Red Hat. I work for Red Hat, therefore, uh, therefore, um, I was working on that, um, and that, that's the supported monitoring solution that is in uh, Red Hat Press Linux. And then uh, it describes how to uh, how to set up everything. Uh, now, uh, this worked for a while, but we had some complaints from from customers. So the, the the dashboard, you know, the PCP comes with a fairly old update on um, not updated uh, version of Grafana it was not working well and uh, it has some performance uh, bottlenecks and issues thanks to the fact or thanks to the design of the of the integration and it's been all it's all new now in PCP5 PCP5 is now in Fedora 31 
and and um, I've decided to, or I was assigned to redo the, the monitoring guide a little bit um, in order to leverage this, uh, the, the new integration that is much more um, better. So what I'm working uh, now is um, taking the monitoring guide from downstream, from satellite, and turning this into a map stream uh, monitoring guide, so home and monitoring guide. Well, I'm actually, uh, it is actually um, a project we are uh, we are uh, uh, currently working on uh, within the community. We have a new repository for the documentation where we have we all already have the first uh, very first guide converted to to Oman guide, which is provisioning guide. And now I'm working. Uh, we are all already working on installation guide. And as this I say side project, I'm, I'm also working on monitoring guide because it's the timing is good. I just really needed to do this. Um, so if you want to uh, go ahead and uh, help us uh, uh, with either providing new content, uh, uh, we are using ASCII-Doc. And uh, other than that, you only need to um, have some know-how uh, about what, what you want to write. So go ahead and file a PR. So this monitoring guide is actually uh, a pull request here. It's work in progress, I know. Um, but I just wanted to show you and gather more uh, information because every single shop uh, is a different uh, kind of monitoring. So I'd like to hear uh, more from you. And so basically the, ch the the major change now is that the PCP version 5, that's not the version that is in RHEL 7. In RHEL 7, there's PCP 4. It was 4.2, 4.1, It was uh, rebased to 4.3, I think. Uh, however, that's uh, that's the current situation, and this version is not the one that we want to our customers to work with. In RHEL 8, there is a more recent version, and in upstream, there's a, there's also the fresh new 5.0, which completely fixes well, mostly fixes all the issues. Um, I'll talk about this a little bit later. So the the idea, and this is the work in progress, but the idea of the deployment will be that you install PCP daemon, the PMCD, on the satellite server, sorry, Foman server. And then uh, you have another uh, machine uh, that will be running, uh, in our case, CentOS 8 or Fedora with the PCP version 5, uh, alongside with Grafana, alongside with PM Logger, which is the um, logging uh, daemon for, for, from PCP, and also Redis. Uh, so the new new PCP and Grafana uh, integration is done through Redis. Basically, all the data are you know, collected using PMCD on the Foreman server, and then PM Logger uh, is a small utility that connects to the PMCD daemon remotely and then you know, downloads all the metrics every minute or wherever you prefer and stores them into archive files in varlib, varlib, uh, sorry, varlog, PCP, PM Logger, and uh, hostname archive files and you can keep those archives as long as you want and then there is uh, another component which i didn't mention is called pm proxy the pm proxy is basically an api that grafana uses and every time you know you you want to do something in, in within grafana it, it will uh, it connects to the pm proxy and the pm proxy reads the logs from those archives and puts them into redis where where they are kept in memory for you know as long as you need, um, of course, older, you know, older um, entries will get um, deleted as the Redis is uh, only memory storage database, and you usually don't need them. So, and this way, it works really seamlessly. So, um, I'll just briefly describe the installation because I'm still working on the guide. But essentially, on the front server, you want to install PCP. Basically, that's it. Configure PMCD. Um, daemon um, TCP uh, port to be opened by firewall and then enable the PMCD daemon. That's pretty much it. If you want, uh, this is not necessary, it's optional. If you want, you can enable so Postgres PMDA agent, which involves several steps. Uh, you need to give it a username and password to Postgres, and that's pretty much it, and restart PMCD. And um, the second thing, uh, which is also optional, uh, which is really interesting for former developers. You 
probably don't need this uh, when you uh, for a day-to-day -day monitoring but you know it's there it's for what we call what I call rails telemetry and these are the internal instrumentations or in internal data coming from the rails application essentially you just need to install a few dependencies for form and telemetry and uh, enable the Prometheus exporter within the application now this is something that has been recently fixed. Uh, we've been using a Ruby client Prometheus library for a while, version 0 some dot something, and it had uh, an issue when it didn't work well in the multi-process environments, like we're, our Rails stack is um, essentially, um, we're using uh, uh, Passenger, which obviously, you know, mo mo all of the Rails or Ruby and Rails stacks are uh, multi-process, and there was a limitation or bug it didn't work correctly. It, it, it would return you every time you hit a server, a worker server, it would re return you a different number. So that's not what you want to have. Now, and, and that's because the Prometheus client library written in, in the Ruby version was one of the first, and it did, it really needed a, a major you know, rewrite. And that really happened um, uh, this year. So we now have a version 1.0. Uh, so if you're installing form and telemetry, or so if, if you're installing form and telemetry, this is just a meta package which would, which will, will install uh, gem, uh, Ruby gem, uh, Prometheus, which is called Prometheus, I think, or Prometheus client, I'm not sure. Just make make sure you you have the 1.0. This is actually currently in nightly, uh, but I requested this to be backported into 1.24. I think it's pretty useful. And we, we would also like to enable this for our customers as soon as possible. We'll see, but um, you need to just wait for 1.25 or 2.0 if you want this on production, if you're using upstream foreman. And also there are two small patches in uh, within the foreman code base that uh, changes things a little bit, um, improves uh, and actually, and actually, and the most importantly, enables this uh, new feature of the Prometheus library, which is the multi-process uh, multi-process um, handling. Essentially, what it does is it creates uh, temp temporary files where it stores the uh, data across the across the um, processes, and then when the, uh, the content is scraped, those files are essentially accessed. So yeah, you just want to enable the Prometheus endpoint, and then within PCP, you just want to enable Prometheus uh, scraper or Prometheus agent. Uh, all you need to do is just create this uh, configuration file format.url with the host name, or, well, well, with the correct, um, you know, virtual host name uh, slash metrics, and you know, enable the agent, and that's pretty much it. There are a couple of small details, but um, and then you know, under under the PCP um, uh, namespace, you you will see a new Prometheus tree with all the you know we have probably a dozen of uh, metrics which, which I'll describe in a minute. That gives you um, a nice overview of what's uh, what's going on within the Rails. Now that's that's all uh, we have for the for now. Uh, we would like to later on. Hopefully next year we would like to add more agents. Uh, I think it would be a good idea to be able to collect metrics from Pulp and Candlepin. Uh, there are already requests for uh, enhancements. Um, so it would be nice to, uh, to collect these uh, as well. The rest of the document is just, um, you know, you things about PCP or about the command line tools. PCP is really powerful on the command line. And then the second part, the, 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 the guide is now divided into two parts. The first part is setting up on your Foreman server, and the second part is installing PCP or installing, I should say, Grafana on monitoring server. That's the, the second server B. Uh, so essentially just a, a VM or RHEL, uh, sorry, VM or, or um, bare metal server with, with some space on, on disk. It really doesn't need to be a uh, high specs. Just make sure that you're installing PCP 5.0. Um, so again, you can you can use Fedora 21, uh, 31, 
or um, I'd expect this is going to be uh, somewhere somewhere in realms in some future. Uh, obviously, we don't know when. Uh, and so essentially, install PCP and then install Grafana, Grafana PCP plugin, and Redis. These are the tools that needs to be installed. And then uh, the first step is to enable PM Logger, which is the component that connects to uh, PMCD, running PMCD, and acquires the logs on uh, on some sampler rate, which is by default 60 seconds. So we'll just create the, this configuration file. And then enable a few ports, uh, because uh, uh, this monitored server uh, will expose Grafana, which is the port 3000. And Grafana connects to connects to 4400322, um, which is the port of the PM uh, proxy. And then uh, these ports are actually won't be necessary. Uh, I was uh, doing some experiments with the stats, sending stats to the network. It didn't work well. So um, so this is going to be removed. And then uh, and then um, it. We need to tell the PM logger which metrics uh, alongside of the generic metrics like CPU, memory, and all those generic metrics alongside the, with those which uh, one which uh, we want to be stored in archives. So if you install Postgres uh, agent, obviously you can you know put it put in here what you actually want. Uh, as an example, I'm putting a tuple tuple monitor metrics uh, that's a number of rows. Uh, Created, fetched, inserted, updated in Foreman Candlefin databases. And secondly, or as um, also um, the Prometheus, the, so the data coming from Rails uh, that's here, specified here, which uh, metrics we want to store in archive files. And then this log mandatory won't be necessary. This will be deleted as I need, just need to test it. Um, and that's uh, pretty much it all. Then Enable PMCD. But that's the uh, monitoring daemon to monitor the monitoring server itself. So it's just like we can monitor the servers um, as well, the, which monitor satellite. A PM logger that connects to the uh, Foman server and acquires the data. Redis, uh, like kind of a temporary store. Redis in this case is really used as a and as a cache. So it's you know there is no valuable data. All the valuable data is stored uh, using by PM logger into the var. Like, Varlog, sorry, Varlog uh, PCP PM logger directory. You know, it can grow a little bit in the beginning of the section. I'm saying, like, make sure there's at least 20 meg, 20 gigabytes. It can go. You know, during my testing, it was 200 megabytes per day of data. But um, you know, on loaded instances, I think it can it can go higher. And then Grafana server and PM proxy. So Grafana server talks to PM proxy. I know this is a little bit complex, and but I'll show you how you can do this easier. If you if you prefer using Prometheus, you can also set it up uh, using Prometheus, and it's, it's more simple. However, as I said, PCP is the recommended monitoring server monitoring solution in RHEL. Prometheus, however, is not. I think in RHEL might be in other. Uh, Products, but definitely not in rel or satellite. Now, uh, now go to the, the the port 3000 where the Grafana is, and then you there are a couple of things like it will introduce you. Uh, sorry, it will show you like the initial you know setup, you know setting up password and stuff. That's pretty much fairly easy. So now I'm going to visit Grafana here. Um, so my host is called Grafana, not Len. My satellite is here. Satellite is that six six not LAN. I'm I'm actually testing this with satellite if you don't mind, but this will work of course with Foreman as well. Uh, so what you will need to do first if you want to achieve like monitoring through PCP is going to here to data sources and add new data source and click on PCP Redis. PCP Redis is like there are two plugins, actually three, but Two plugins uh, you'll notice uh, PC with Vector and PCP Redis. You want to use this Redis because Vector only scrapes live data and won't show you any historical data at all. PCP Redis does, however, can go to history or store historical data. 
and show you historical data. So you click select and then you give it a name. The URL is obvious, the port is 44322. So in my case, I've already created this set 66 not land here. That's pretty much it. So I have my data source here, PC Purities, as you can see. Uh, sorry, it's localhost. Sorry, uh, we are we're connecting collect, connecting to localhost because the, uh, on this monitoring server the PM proxy is running on localhost, not on set six six. six sorry. Uh, so it was the first step, and then um, it will also show you some uh, example dashboards, and it ships with the PCP Redis host overview dashboard. You can uh, you can actually um, use. So if I click on that. This should give you should give you a, a dashboard dashboard which you know shows you the expected things like load average, um, CPU, and stuff like that. So it's pretty basic, but you get the, the you know the, the basic things uh, and and. Now, you know, uh, everything should work as expected. Um, so if you want to add a new thing, it actually works. Um, uh, so like, for example, Postgres. Uh, also, you know, this is now running through the PCP, uh, PCP Graphite, sorry, PCP Grafana plugin data source. You can actually, you know, how many Postgres uh, rows were fetched, for example, uh, and uh, things like that. However, you know, uh, I found that it is not, you know, perfect. Still, I see uh, issues here and there uh, when something doesn't withdraw. I've reported this to the PCP team, and we are working through the bugs. I've already reported two bugs, and which uh, both have been fixed. Um, so and it's it's sub ideal for now. So what I would like to show you instead, like so, this is how you essentially this is the work in progress. How you know uh, satellite customers will, will be advised to to uh, do monitoring with, uh, with uh, satellite. However, if you want to monitor a former and or satellite, actually. Uh, using Prometheus, you can. Um, all you need to do essentially is to install Prometheus uh, and Prometheus uh, uh, Node Exporter. So, and in, in, on, on satellite, what I did was I just downloaded Node Exporter and Prometheus from the Prometheus uh, website, created the configuration file. It's documented like a, a one-minute configuration started, and it, uh, it immediately showed up here, and here. Mm, so you know, Node Exporter gives you a lot of information about the node itself, uh, CPU, memory, and network, and I/O, and stuff like that. Sorry, I just, I just, uh, my wife's calling. And and then what you want to install is PCP dash Prometheus. Sorry, PCM. Sorry. Grafana dash uh, Grafana dash uh, Prometheus uh, data source. So I've done that as well. So if, you, if I go to the data sources, I also have uh, Prometheus uh, data source. I've installed the, the Prometheus on the satellite server itself. However, you can install the Prometheus on. You, you should install Prometheus on the monitoring server and then only the node exporter. On the um, on the uh, satellite server, performance server. Um, let me just show you. If you enable the Prometheus uh, porter on Foreman, this is like the slash matrix. It's the endpoint. If you hit it, you are you're getting the numbers. So this this is essentially how both Prometheus uh, scraper or the APCP uh, agent you know gets data from Rails and I've created um, a satellite 66 dashboard, which actually uh, actually works better. 
uh, I have to say. Um, and um, that's <clears throat> that. It, so this this is data coming from Prometheus. Uh, so I've basically downloaded Prometheus um, um, dashboard uh, for Grafana. There are many, so uh, just pick a random one, which shows you the data from from uh, from uh, Node Exporter. And then on top of that, I've created a few, uh, actually six more graphs I'd like to actually describe now. So average response is a query that uh, essentially, and let me just quickly grab and you know, run here. Uh, I'm discovering now a little bit, so the, uh, so the numbers will go a little bit higher. So uh, this is essentially a, Average uh, average uh, amount of milliseconds spent per edge request, or no, average across all the controllers and all the actions for the Rails application. Uh, so it's going up a little bit now. Uh, and in the guide at the end, the, the, there's a the, the list of uh, the metrics here actually reporting from Rails. And this is actually um, HTTP request total duration. This one, HTTP request total duration is the metrics metric that is used in this graph. I can actually edit it, um, and this is rate for last last five minutes. Uh, Where you you know, for men I use histograms to. To you know, uh, give the number. So essentially, what do we need to do? And this is Grafa uh, Sorry, this is uh, Prometheus 101. Uh, you need to you know divide sum by counts, and then we need to convert this to rate, and we need to we, we want to do a sum. Um, so this is uh, average response time, which is a pretty interesting number. What is and we also uh, expose this per, you know, and via, so this is total duration, and we also uh, do DB and view duration, or should be DB and, and the rest. It's not just view, this is view plus contro controller, if you know Rails, so we ha you have database, view and controller. Um, so you can, you know, pull the numbers from, you know, and, div you know, tell what's, what's actually, how much time is spent in database, how much time is spent in the rest. And I could even draw it in, into one graph. I just didn't bother. Um, so this is um, these are requests, uh, requests, uh, number of requests. Uh, this is also a rate per per five minutes, I think. Click on this. So this is how you calculate. Uh, uh, Requests per, uh, per this is per one minute. Uh, so it uses FM Rails HTTP requests. So we uh, we have this uh, measurement. Uh, so this is total numbers. It's just an increasing number. Um, this one is interesting though, and it is it has a labels, control and action. So here from this uh, graph, you can actually tell that here we have we we see a spike. This is actually. API v2 discovered host controller, so we can see that average uh, um, average number. But so, so sorry, the rate of the uh, of this uh, action a controller. It's being called like 0 0.5 per minute. Which is, it's just, which is weird. I'm calling it more than that. The number hopefully will go higher. Uh, chances are, and do the calculation incorrectly. One minute rate of this counter control action. I'd expect this to be higher than that. Of course, you can also use the Prometheus. Um, let's 
one one hour. Yeah. Yeah. Quickly execute. Yeah, it's weird. Anyway, I just want to finish this and show you what you can actually get. Uh, the the other interesting, uh, you know, graphs you can get from from the data from coming from Rails is active record instances. So basically, every time we create a we load a record from database, we create an what's called active record instance. And we can see there's there's slight spike here. Uh, you're creating a more and more, uh, you know, data. So I'd expect uh, here to to host host uh, going a little bit up. Oh, it doesn't look so, okay. <laughs> sure. Um, I, I, I didn't have the refreshing. Also, refresh. I'm not familiar with Grafana, uh, to be honest. So it didn't refresh. So now we, we can see and the more and more instances being um, created. And this actually can be broken down to uh, individual, you know. Models, so you can see if if there, we would probably if there was a bug that uh, on a, let's say screen we load uh, all the records in the database and then show just first ten, you would see spike like ten thousand or something uh, here. That would be uh, would be signal that um, something is you know loaded into memory. Uh, you know, it's called eco loading. Um, so we also have this one uh, request time per action. So this one is actually FM Rails HTTP request total duration. Uh, but this time this is not sum. This is actually broken down by controller dot action. So here we can actually say this one's really really interesting. Is uh, we see that we see which of these uh, controls and action are actually causing, uh, you know, are slow essentially. So we can see that we have we have unattended controller host template. So what I'm doing now in in a two loops, I'm hitting unattended controller, you know, and I'm so I'm also uh, discovering hosts. So on the average, as we can see, the average response time is 200. 200. However, and I think I don't get the the math right because um, because average is 200 and here I'm not sure. And it's the uh, could be uh, 400 is for the uh, discovered discover host discovery and 50 60 is for the uh, for the Unattended controller, and uh, as you know, this instance is pretty much empty, and there's no load. So, as you know, more and more endpoints would would you know be working, and you know, processing requests. All the all the controller and action pairs would be on this graph showing showing what's actually slow. Uh, audits recording. Uh, so this is a number of audits created. And this should be rate. I think I messed up this one. Yeah, it's rate. Why the rate shouldn't be that increasing? So and again, we have FM Rails audit records created, um, audit records created. So just a counter number of audit creates create, audit records created in DB. It has a label of type, so it can be there. My headphone slipped. So this can be broken down by type. So like this is uh, NIC, NIC network uh, interface. 
So, oh, this is per one hour, so maybe that's the reason why it's increasing. If I did do this per five seconds, let's say it should stabilize. What? No data points. Yeah, so I'm really not familiar with both Prometheus and and uh, and uh, Grafana. Um, however, I just wanted to go over and over those uh, geometry names and how they can be useful. The last one is number of facts processed. Uh, so basically, this is this is uh, import of facts count versus this one. Last one uh, I'm going to talk about, and that's uh, it has a three labels: updated, deleted, and edit. And this is per five minutes. Really weird. Five minutes, and the rate uh, is really five facts per. Uh, I, I think I'm not doing the math. The the syntax is probably incorrect. Uh, it should be more. However, this graph should give you. Um, give you a uh, amount of facts processed yeah, so you can of course um, add more uh, there are a couple of things like um, respond codes um, so you can watch for errors like if something is giving error and also failed UI logins could be a good sign of some somebody's trying to get in um, importer has a multiple uh, metrics you can you can use I've only showed the number of facts Process. There's also duration, duration, how long it took, um, and uh, things with uh, Ruby GC are pretty much, um, you know, uh, low level. These enable these only if you're familiar with the Ruby garbage collect collector. Um, so yeah, and this is kind of confusing. I know that I, I just uh, I just wanted to show you the. I just wanted to show you working PCP integration. Uh, it works for the monitoring of the, of the server itself of Postgres. That works great, and it's, it's snap, snappy, and it works fine. However, if you want to um, show data coming from the Rails through Prometheus uh, agent, doesn't work for some reason. Doesn't show up in Grafana, so it's probably a bug. Uh, but there's a workaround. Uh, or if you like uh, Prometheus, you can set up Prometheus pretty easily. And uh, if you're if you have uh, in the future version of Foment, so that's nightly, and uh, that's been fixed. Uh, so the the Prometheus exporter will now work correctly. Oh, I think I haven't applied a patch on my instance. Maybe that's the that's the reason why I see you know, incorrect numbers. Uh, um, and then you can you can easily integrate this with any kind of Prometheus compatible tool, including Grafana. So that's pretty much all, all I have today. Uh, sorry for the confusion, um, uh, but I'd like to sh I'd like to ask for feedback. If you uh, if there's anything you have on your mind, please come back to us. Uh, you, we have Discord forums. Of course, you can uh, we can reach to us on IRC channels. And if there's something you would like to see in the Rails telemetry, or some uh, other numbers, or if there, or even if you have a successful uh, monitoring deployments uh, foreman, just share it with us. And then that's that's about it. If you're not sleeping already. Thank you very much for <laughs> thank you very much for presenting, Lukash. I hope we get some feedback about that as well. Thank you for everyone that's watching. Um, happy holidays and see you next demo. So next year. <laughs>